Tong Kyu Yun uh, from Geoscience Group in Sandia National Laboratory. Uh, so his talk is about the primary prediction of forest media using CNN with physical properties. Uh, thanks, Eddie, uh, for organizing uh, sessions. And actually, uh, uh, my presentation is the last one. My presentation is quite relevant to actually a previous one by Maruti, and so it's kind of nice. And actually, uh, this is kind of toy kind of project out of our uh, internal LDLD project. We also kind of trying to develop some uh, machine learning methodology, in particular multi-scale machine learning application for multi-scale flow and transport and mechanical uh, deformation in fractured and process media. But typically, I think as a national lab, we are really uh, are trying to dealing with some many uh, security systems, such as um, uh, nuclear exposure testing, subsurface energy resources, and some waste disposal. And this slide is showing some of conceptual model. Actually, uh, we developed a shell analytics, actually quite similar to uh, what uh, previous presentation covered. And so uh, <clears throat> from the previous presentation, actually, uh, it's the overview uh, at this large scale pretty well. And this is typical kind of uh, deep uh, horizontal well to extract some uh, shale oil and gas. And if we really uh, connect this uh, larger scale to uh, next level of subscale, we actually need to identify fracture network, which was described in uh, uh, discrete uh, fracture network in previous uh, simulations. Actually, those uh, discrete fracture network really uh, connect to the very small, uh, you know, nano uh, micron scale kind of pore structures. Uh, one of actually imaging showing here is actually shale imaging, and you can see a lot of kind of small pores, you know, ranging from one nanometer to some uh, uh, micron scales. And if we actually uh, utilize this information, obviously we end up having really large degree of freedom uh, problems uh, over relatively small uh, length scale here. Uh, although actually we can simulate those using high precision model, obviously practically uh, almost impossible to simulate uh, this scale to actually account for a uh, large scale phenomena. So uh, in our community, we develop also reduced model, so-called uh, physics, uh, uh, for network uh, modeling, which accounts for uh, main physics, but actually we can reduce the degree of freedom uh, significantly, and then actually we can handle a lot of different kind of physics. So in our projects, we try to really uh, uh, link this uh, poor network model into next level model, uh, which is actually a fracture scale <coughs> uh, domain. And then uh, we can actually represent all these using actually graph network uh, system, although actually uh, those uh, link function account for uh, some uh, actual physics uh, rather than just uh, uh, connections. And then we can eventually actually uh, upscale those uh, intermediate scale uh, system to larger scales. And then another uh, dynamic system is called uh, flow and reactive transport. And this type of uh, study has been done uh, quite a bit uh, over the past one or two decades out of some CO2 projects. And this one uh, just kind of show a summary of uh, my previous work. So we have some uh, domain, post media domain here. So a uh, white circle uh, represents some uh, obstacles. So instead of one obstacle, in typically actually in uh, geoscience domain, we have uh, multiple obstacles. And so this kind of stocks flow uh, server. So you can uh, see some uh, uh, example of horizontal velocity in given uh, post media distribution. In this case, I index some calcium uh, carbonate uh, uh, solution uh, into this domain. Uh, these two uh, ions uh, react and then make a uh, production of uh, calcite. And actually over time, this uh, calcite precipitate actually is system change. So as a toy problem, I also made uh, some kind of more complex domains. So instead of uniform, uh, these properties of grains, I can add some more complexity by uh, introducing non-reactive and reactive domains. And because of this uh, different kind of uh, reactive, reactive areas, you can see actual uh, solution uh, product of this uh, reactive transport is varying depending on actual uh, model domain. The bottom uh, imaging showing uh, numerical domain uh, consisting of all uh, reactive grains. So actually you can see uh, a lot of kind of different uh, this solution uh, over time. As a result, actually, uh, this precipitation pattern quite changes. 
Actually, uh, we can link these different types of patterns to actual uh, observation. We can see out of some outcrops. Um, but uh, bottom line is actual, uh, this system is uh, really uh, complex. And also, in post scale, this uh, simulation is really fun. Uh, however, very expensive uh, to actually upscale for large uh, systems. So typically, uh, we calculated so-called permeability and porosity or surface area over time. Uh, since uh, this uh, stock server is really expensive, if you need to update this uh, uh, velocity field every time. For example, here, this final uh, simulation result probably adds a result of tens of thousand time iteration. Uh, so instead of actually uh, doing a uh, a stock server uh, calculation actually can come up with some uh, effective parameters uh, in terms of permeability and, uh, and porosities. And to do that, actually, yeah, we try to using some physics informed machine learning. And I mean, this is, has been actually discussed a lot uh, today, so I can skip it. And uh, again, I just uh, 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 made some uh, slide of uh, what actually a uh, process media system uh, we are uh, talking about uh, in laboratory. We can see very ideal uh, kind of bead packing and sandstones, relatively large uh, kind of pool space. And chalk, uh, some of chalk has relatively small or uh, tight uh, pool space to relatively large uh, pool space as well. Shale uh, consists of really small uh, uh, pool space uh, ranging from one nanometer to micro scales. So you can see uh, some uh, kind of binary uh, uh, segmentation digits. And also, uh, you can see some kind of uh, pore network system, which represent pores and actually a connection over those pores. And here, uh, once actually we uh, got these images, uh, we need to process uh, those data so that we can uh, utilize uh, either for kind of calculating properties or uh, using those uh, data as input. So typically, uh, that involves uh, segmentations and Traditionally, uh, actual, uh, this uh, segmentation with uh, some images I'm showing here is quite challenging. For example, here, the shale, carbonate chalk, another carbonate chalk, and sandstone, except the sandstone, which is uh, one of uh, image slides in uh, micro CT images. Oh, I need to actually uh, mention that actually all images are actually three dimensional images. I'm showing only one snapshot of actually those three dimensional data set. And these three data actually uh, give us really big challenges uh, using a traditional um, uh, uh, image segmentation methodology. Personally, uh, uh, I spent literally probably uh, three to four days to actually uh, segment uh, this image to make this ground truth uh, as a training data. And even actually this comment told me, I think uh, it kind of took actually a couple of months to actually finalize uh, uh, this uh, segmentation uh, lizard. And so uh, in this case, uh, we actually uh, initially uh, using some uh, kind of typical kind of, uh, you know, uh, vanilla CNN or very uh, consortium CNN uh, a model uh, uh, from scratch. However, actually, uh, uh, accuracy wasn't really great. So instead of actually building our own script, actually, uh, we uh, started actually doing some transfer learning with existing uh, actually uh, uh, models. For example, here uh, we are using actually BGG16, and uh, we use uh, this uh, pre-existing model uh, uh, for the <clears throat> encoder part in UNET, and then actually we uh, retrain uh, decoder part only. Uh, it, uh, by doing this, actually we reduced uh, training time dramatically, and as well as actually uh, the uh, required uh, size of uh, training data was dramatically reduced. And this bottom line is showing uh, some segmentation measures. And you can see uh, visually actual, uh, this segmentation captured most of uh, uh, kind of features. Uh, in particular, this actual shale uh, data, actually there are three different phases. One is uh, kind of minerals and organics, and this uh, uh, pink showing uh, some uh, organic pores. Actually, uh, this uh, lizard actually uh, looks better than actual uh, ground truth, and so actually it has uh, really uh, ability to capture these intrinsic uh, features of the original images. So uh, for uh, today, uh, a piece of interest is actually uh, fluid from uh, media in terms of uh, permeability, 
And in uh, our system, typically uh, we represent our flow field using a stock flow because uh, our Leyland number is uh, really low and typically no uh, boundary conditions. So you can use uh, uh, this uh, toxication with some mass values uh, equations. In continuous scale, we typically using a dash flow row and which uh, represented by this K, uh, which is uh, some probability uh, values, uh, which is a measure of some uh, cross media ability uh, to allow fluid to pass through. So higher value actually allow a fluid to flow faster. And so we really want to estimate this K uh, uh, with some image data as well as a uh, couple of uh, different uh, physical uh, information. So uh, for this uh, presentation, uh, we generate uh, some toy uh, bead packing, uh, like uh, as shown here. So we change it. Uh, in this case, we are using only actually uh, uh, 2D uh, circular shapes. And then, but actually we change the size of these suckers. So we uh, made uh, about 350 uh, images, and then we split those into training and uh, uh, testings. And then uh, once we generate this one, actually we uh, constructed the poor network, and then calculating uh, some properties which are uh, used for input for uh, machine learning. So this uh, slide is showing an uh, example of uh, uh, porous media uh, we generated. Actually, it covered quite a actual range of uh, porosity. This is surface area. Uh, for machine learning, actually, we normalize all the data. Typically, this uh, uh, permeability uh, has a proportional uh, to uh, cross values and inversely proportional to uh, surface area. But it's kind of scattered. Uh, uh, one thing that actually uh, we uh, try to uh, actually uh, reproduce uh, uh, from the uh, previous work uh, uh, comes from uh, two different kind of uh, actually studies. One is actually uh, Brad Amonis, SND actually, uh, he's a neuroscientist. I think he proposed to include some kind of uh, superclass information, some other kind of context related to original images. So he kind of uh, uh, actually augment this uh, superclass information uh, to actually dense layers and improve uh, classification of images genetically. And Wu et al. also uh, kind of uh, uh, suggest actually uh, instead of using a regular CNN only, he added two physical properties, which is a porosity and surface area as a numeric value into the, this uh, actual, uh, uh, fully connected uh, multilayer perception uh, regions and then improved a lot. So uh, based on a uh, couple of actually uh, literature, we kind of identified a couple of different kind of uh, uh, evaluation objectives. Here, we really want to evaluate the effect of CNN architectures, so, you know, what's the best way to incorporate uh, physical properties or what's the optimal way. Uh, and also, uh, we want to evaluate some balance between, you know, some information uh, from CNN uh, versus some information from uh, physical properties on train. So our uh, conversation neural network architectures, pretty simple. So we actually repeat this uh, 16, uh, Three by three filters, four times, and then Lilu and well, Lilu, uh, uh, and Lilu, and a max pooling uh, operator has been uh, applied. And uh, data augmentation side, uh, we using this uh, Prostian uh, uh, surface area uh, through the multi-layer perception, and, and then actually we change the uh, uh, number of this uh, output uh, point, uh, and actually uh, uh, merge this output from MLP to uh, convolutional uh, dense uh, layers. And this, after that, actually, uh, we uh, make a prediction after uh, this uh, kind of uh, linear activations. And here, uh, so next couple of uh, slides is showing some uh, some uh, results. And so here is our uh, kind of base case. Okay, so CNN1 uh, represents some architecture I'm just showing. So uh, Prosty and uh, Surface area uh, has augmented uh, through the uh, multi-layer perception uh, model uh, into uh, CNN networks. And uh, I have to actually uh, mention that all of the results I'm actually showing uh, actually performs better than typical empirical correlation uh, method uh, developed in our community. And so I kind of uh, skip those uh, uh, comparisons. But here, actually, I compare from this 
uh, uh, method, new method uh, versus some uh, CNN with uh, image only. So there is no uh, physical uh, properties uh, used as a training input. And we can see uh, some uh, dramatic improvement. And I didn't actually uh, improve the uh, loss function values, but I'm showing just kind of uh, luminous scale data. But one to one line uh, represent perfect uh, curve. So actually this as a slope close to uh, one, actually, uh, we expect to be uh, more accurate. And so, if you look at the, actually uh, this uh, slope uh, values, uh, so this uh, left hand case uh, uh, has much better uh, prediction uh, capabilities. In terms of training, actually, all models are pretty good. Um, so, in this case, uh, we uh, compare uh, this reference case with the other two cases where only one uh, physical uh, property values has been used. Obviously, these two values are better as expected. And here, uh, we also uh, compare uh, some uh, CNN architecture as well as uh, 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 multi-layer perception with two uh, data uh, cases versus some uh, previous CNN architecture, which is pretty shallow, I think, to a uh, conversion neural network with uh, to uh, physical data as uh, numeric uh, data only. So uh, actual, uh, our value is 0.8 uh, as a slope value is much uh, actually higher than uh, 0.689 uh, in a previous case. So, uh, so actually a uh, method to incorporate a physical quantity also improve uh, model prediction as well. And we also uh, look at the actually uh, balance uh, between uh, so output from uh, CNN uh, versus the output from uh, uh, multilayer perception uh, particular here. So uh, in this reference case, uh, we actually using uh, 12 neurons versus actually four uh, neurons out of this uh, MLP and versus four plus one and four plus two. And I mean, we didn't uh, do a, a kind of hyperparameter optimization uh, in this sense, uh, but uh, just by changing uh, some manually. But we did quite a number of uh, cases uh, in this, and then we found actually uh, this uh, two and two uh, uh, pairs actually give us best uh, digit. So uh, uh, balance of information from uh, CNN and actually uh, MLP uh, kind of uh, uh, important, uh, which uh, may account for so information, actually, degree of information we can extract from images versus uh, degree of information uh, uh, we can extract uh, from physical data in this particular case. And in this case, also, uh, we compare uh, uh, some of uh, cases I already presented versus some uh, uh, previous uh, cases. In particular here, uh, these two cases uh, uh, use uh, two parameters across the end surface area as numeric values. Uh, However, uh, different as the CNN architecture uh, uh, give us much better uh, prediction. So uh, as expected, actually, architecture of CNN uh, actually matters to improve uh, model prediction as well. And one thing that actually uh, we notice uh, is that actually uh, how to uh, uh, use some our uh, binary image data. Uh, so we compare uh, uh, you know, a binary image input uh, here uh, and then so in this case, uh, we using actually grain as a truth and then actually force as a force to uh, binary data, and we actually invert it uh, this case for another uh, case, and actually this uh, image uh, with this grain as a truth kind of uh, pro consistently actually uh, provide a better prediction than uh, the other case. It's kind of wonder because actually uh, the flow system uh, really are governed by a uh, media uh, poor spaces. However, uh, when you actually feed images uh, with this grain as a truth, actually uh, this model, trained model, uh, uh, has much better uh, prediction capability than the other case. And so we extract some uh, actual activation uh, out of this H convolution layers. So. Uh, the first convolution layer actually capture uh, this uh, post media pattern relatively well uh, with some other uh, kind of uh, set uh, kind of capture some of the interface. And then actually uh, after the uh, second convolution layer actually it capture more and more interface as well as some, some pore space. 
And aperture convolution uh, layer, uh, third convolution layer, actually you can see uh, actually uh, a lot of pores are uh, activated and then actually uh, solid are uh, uh, kind of uh, deactivated here. So that's why uh, the feed through the, this uh, kind of uh, image uh, with grain as a truth kind of has better uh, predictability in, in this particular case. And then, okay, uh, so this is the end of actually our project. This kind of uh, serves our, our toy kind of project for a more larger scale kind of shared analytics. And now, and so uh, in this uh, demonstration, yeah, we're showing actually a uh, prediction with the physical data performance, much better than a uh, case with uh, image only, more complex image data with actual real uh, also material I uh, showed uh, at the beginning of presentation will be used with some transport learning. Uh, for example, uh, these existing other some pre-existing uh, models uh, as in semantic uh, image segmentation. In particular, we are doing actual 3D uh, prediction uh, as well, and then uh, this incorporation of physical features and equation residual, uh, uh, as we uh, stand actually today, uh, can actually improve some of this type of uh, prediction dramatically. So this is end of presentation. I'd be happy to answer questions. There any? Uh, any questions? So did you calculate the permeability from the uh, generated images or the pictures or by running um, Stokes equation? Uh, yes and no. Uh, we actually tested, uh, we, uh, finally actually we used a Ponetong model. However, uh, we actually validate Ponetong model result with uh, some stock server uh, for certain uh, uh, image data set. So that's the, the actual um, image from the rock or? Uh, for this demonstration, no, actually kind of toy problem. We synthetically okay. generate media, uh, but uh, actually uh, we are uh, using actually actual uh, real uh, data in 3D mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, uh, thank you for the great talk, Hong Gyu. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. So, yeah, we are done for the uh, first day of our symposium.